Well, yesterday on the program, I discussed President Biden's agreement to release $6 billion, that's with a B, dollars to the to Iran as a part of the hostage exchange program with the terrorist regime. Now, the White House continues to defend the deal, which will subsidize uh, Iran's terrorism and nuclear, nuclear weapons capabilities, while also guaranteeing its regime, regime will continue to seize to uh, seize more hostages in the future. It incentivizes it. Well, joining me now to uh, continue our discussion from yesterday, as well as touch on other international issues of concern, retired Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, who serves as FRC's executive vice president. General Boykin spent the last four years of his 36 and a half year military career serving as the deputy undersecretary of defense for intelligence. General, welcome back. I'm glad to be with you. So let me start with a clip. We talked about it yesterday, but it had not yet aired. This was the president of Iran, President Raisi, uh, on NBC, basically saying that they'll do whatever they want with uh, the money. Let's play clip number 11. This money belongs to the Islamic Republic of Iran, and naturally, we will decide, the Islamic Republic of Iran will decide to, to spend it wherever uh, we need it. So pushing back on that today was uh, John Kirby. He's the coordinator for strategic communications at the National Security Council in the White House. Uh, he said this in response to that clip five. The Iranian people will be the beneficiaries of, the, of these funds, not the regime. The regime doesn't get to touch the money, Peter. It doesn't go to them. They don't get to, the, they don't get to decide uh, ultimate destination, uh, and, uh, and they have no direct access to it. General, I'm, I'm speechless. Does he, does he really believe what he is saying? Tony, I don't know how he could. Look, this guy's been around a long time. He's been a press secretary for a long time. And I don't see how he could possibly believe what he is saying, given the track record of the Iranians, given the track record of what they've done uh, with the JCPOA, for example. That was a, lo a rock-solid agreement, supposedly. And look what they've done. They have violated just about every provision within the JCPOA. No, the one that's telling the truth here is actually the Iranian president, Raisi. How would the, the regime not have control of the money? It, it doesn't make any sense. There's no logic to that. Uh, first of all, I think everybody knows that it, even if this was America, there is no way once that money is released that you have any control over it. And I would bet you that there are going to be some people in this administration in Iran today that are going to become wealthy people overnight. I want to play another clip, uh, because obviously people are saying the same things we talked about yesterday. This is only going to incentivize bad behavior. And how do you know that this is only going to be used for humanitarian purposes, which is what they're, the U.S. is claiming? Play clip number three. If Iran tries to divert the funds, we'll take action and we'll lock them up again. I also want to be clear. This is not a payment of any kind. It's not ransom. These aren't U.S. taxpayer dollars. So I guess they can probably put toothpaste back in the tube again, too, right? Yeah. Well, this is, a, this is the same regime now, keep in mind, the same administration that, uh, that probably is responsible for the most abysmal foreign uh, policy event in in my lifetime, and that was Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Uh, this is the same uh, organization there, or administration, that has made so many bad mistakes, so many bad decisions, so many things that have cost our reputation in the world. And, uh, and now we are asked to believe them. And, you know, what really ticks me off about this, Tony, is when Kirby says, well, go ask the parents of this person, well, how they feel about it. They don't make foreign policy in this country. It's not their responsibility. I, I am sorry for them. Right. I really am. I want to see their children home as well. But that, to, to say that to an American citizen, 
uh, especially somebody in the media, is is just uh, I I think it's just unforgivable for him to do that and pull a lack that of card. Leader. It's a lack of leadership. It is absolutely a lack of leadership. Because there's another way to bring Americans home. We talked about it yesterday. That is to put America first and to have a strong military. Ronald Reagan understood that. You saw that, serving under Ronald Reagan. That strength gains respect. Weakness is exploited. And that's what this is. This is exploiting America. And the idea that once they re they've turned these monies over to Qatar, and they're going to be distributing them, they're not going to be able to get this money back once it starts flowing. Yeah, and look, you got to look at uh, Ronald Reagan th through the lens of uh, Americans that want to put America first. You got to look at Ronald Reagan that way because he was the same. He didn't talk about it in those in those terms. But when the Russians and the Cubans were building airfields down on a little island off the north coast of South America that would put those planes within reach of America, Ronald Reagan said, "Not in my hemisphere and not on my watch." And he 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 sent the military down there to clean that place up, turn it back over. And there was there were repeated things that he did like that. And it got to the point where nobody was going to challenge him anymore. And Trump was the same way. He was exactly the same and, way. And the different, and I'm not saying that other Republican leaders that we've had would not take action, but those two presidents took, when they would take action, it was to win. It was all out. It was right. all or nothing as far as they were concerned. And they sent what was needed, uh, and in most cases, what was asked for by the commanders on the ground. That was a basic principle, and they intended that, uh, the, that we were going to win whatever it took, we were going and to win. And that was a big break, I mean, going back to re really Korea, where we started uh, this uh, containment policy in terms of our military engagement, That's just right. to contain, not to actually win. That, that is exactly right, and that was, that was such a shock to the World War II veterans, you know, that we were in a war that we could not say we had won. And, and there was a, I mean, there were a lot of lives, American lives lost in, in Korea too. But the, you did, you had Harry Truman, look, uh, give him hell Harry, you know, who uh, I, I don't think did what he should have done until uh, he got down to the very end there and he realized that this war will go on and we're gonna lose another million Americans was the estimate at the time. And, uh, and, and he, he went off you know, all out. It's all or nothing on what we're about to do here. But since him, we haven't really had a president until Reagan came along right. that really understood that. Even Eisenhower, you know. Well, let's let's transition because I don't want to run out of time again today. We ran out of time yesterday. I, I want to go to Russia. This meeting with uh, the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong Un, taking a field trip to uh, to Russia to meet with Vladimir Putin. What are we to make of this? What do we know? Well, obviously, uh, Kim Jong-un wants, uh, wants to be in the headlines. He, he wants to be back in the public eye. And, uh, but they, there are some real issues here, and they're, they're, and they're concerning. We, we need to take this very seriously uh, because he does have a nuclear capability. Where he's suffering is with his missiles, and that's one of the things that he wants from the Russians. He wants te technology that will help him to build the missiles that would be able to deliver nuclear warheads. Uh, and he also, he, for years, he's been getting oil from the Russians. So he is very dependent upon them. And I think he, uh, uh, among other things, he wants to make sure that that relationship is solid. Uh, and what, what Putin wants from him is he wants artillery rounds, he wants small arms ammunition, and, uh, and, and anything else that they have that would help him to uh, over, overcome the U Ukrainians. So North Korea has the manufacturing capability to turn that out? They have the capability. They've also got big stockpiles. They've got a lot of stockpiles. Remember, they, they got their tactics largely from Russia, and Russia is one who believes just fire as much artillery as you can. This, is a, this goes back to, to World War II fire as much artillery as you can, you know, deplete everything that your enemy has on the ground, deplete it, 
and, uh, and then make your attack. And that's what we trained for, for the fold and gap, as, as it was called, that uh, we expected to fight if we had another war. And uh, so that's what, they, that's what the uh, uh, Russians want from him, is they want that artillery that will give them the opportunity to do just that. And they fired, they have already fired over a million rounds of artillery based on the numbers that I've seen. So will this accelerate North Korea's ability to have an effective uh, missile? If they give them the technology, the missile technology, if the Russians do that, then yes, of course. It because will. Russia now is, I mean, what does Russia have to lose? They're isolated from the rest of the world. They uh -huh. need this, they need these munitions. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, where else, where else did they turn? I mean, China is not as responsive. Uh, North Korea, as you said, uh, Kim Jong-un is looking for headlines, but he's looking for a friend. And yes. if he can advance his uh, missile technology, I mean, it's a win-win for him. Well, you look at it, uh, he and, and, uh, and Putin both have become pariahs. They have. They are isolated now. And, uh, and China's playing both, both sides. China's doing some, some funny stuff, like, uh, like when he uh, had this big uh, leaders meeting in, uh, with the leaders in, in the Central Asian region, there, the Afghanistan, or not Afghanistan, but Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, and all that. And he didn't invite Putin to that after he had just left Putin's headquarters and, uh, and told him, we're going to see a, a new day dawning. We're going to see uh, a situation that we haven't seen in a hundred years between the two of us. And then he went off and invited all these other uh, people to uh, a, a meeting and left Putin out. So Putin's got to realize he's being played, and uh, and the Chinese are just playing him like a fiddle. We just got about a minute left, uh, General. But as we see this progressing now that we're you know way into this Ukrainian war, these alliances, the shifting of the international. Uh, geopolitical board, are we at a much more volatile point or are there more danger points around the around the world that we need to be watching? I think there is because there's so many political shifts now. I mean, the, the power shifts that are taking place now. And look, the, make no mistake, our biggest enemy, our most dangerous and threatening enemy is China. But Russia is not too far behind them, and particularly given the man that is in charge of, of, of Russia right now, because I think he is getting desperate. He has been a total failure in terms of uh, doing what he intended to do and expected to do with the Ukrainians. And he, it's embarrassed him on all fronts. His own soldiers are killing their leaders, and, 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 and some of them are even getting out of their tanks and walking back to Belarus. That's a huge embarrassment for him. So, in fact, if you look at yesterday's paper, there was some propaganda out about how all these young people, young men in Russia, are rushing down to the station, to the recruiting stations, so they can sign up and fight in this glorious war. That's not true. More propaganda, kind of what we see in, coming out of our government. It is. General, thanks for joining me. Good to be here.